think we'll just start. That's okay, because we're kind of trending already. Okay, so um, my name is Susie Miles. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, thank you so much for coming. It's my first convergence. I'm so excited. It's kind of the first time I've ever done anything like this, so I'm going to apologize now for anything that goes hideously wrong. You might not even realize it's gone hideously wrong, so... Until we all die. Yeah. yeah. So, so rule number one, we are going to be working with microbes. Uh, they're not dangerous, but don't swallow them. <laughs> rule number one, don't swallow them, because they will make you sick, right? You will you will feel a bit rough. Um, uh, don't stick your fingers in them and then lick your fingers. Uh, there should be some alcohol on all the tables. If you think you've got some on your fingers, just give your hands a bit of a rub with the alcohol. Um, these are live microbes, so just bear that in mind, right? But they won't jump out of the petri dish and eat you or anything like that. Okay, so, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, explain to you a little bit about what bioluminescence is, um, talk to you a little bit about some of the creatures that glow, because I am kind of absolutely obsessed with them. Uh, <laughs> yay, yay, microbes. Uh, yay, yay, microbes. Um, and then, so what I had planned is, uh, I, I hope I have a little demo of some bioluminescence for you, which will mean plunging you into the dark and then having something glow at us. Um, as with all kind of science things, I kind of, as a scientist, think it's more voodoo, so sometimes things don't work, even though they're supposed to, so we hope we'll have a flash of light, but... You never know. So um, I apologize in advance if there is no oh, question. No, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, then what we're going to do, I have some glowing bacteria and um, they, they don't, I call them glowing bacteria. They aren't actually glowing at the moment, I don't think. Um, but what I want you to do is um, at, when I say you will get some petri dishes, I will explain to you how I want you to draw your design. You will then get to paint your design in bacteria. And then we're going to try and incubate them overnight, um, and then we're going to take some photos of them tomorrow if they are glowing. Um, and then what we're going to do is put them up on Flickr um, so that you can see your handiwork. So there, there basically is going to be no coming back tomorrow and seeing them. We will kind of sort all that. Uh, the caveat to that is they might not actually be glowing tomorrow. So these microbes have been on a really, really long journey. Um, I, I am British, but I live in New Zealand, and we FedEx these bugs from New Zealand to a lab here, and then the guys in the lab, I don't know if there's anyone here who did that for me, because I have no idea who they were, but these lovely people put them into their culture and grew them for us, and they're not looking, it's like maybe they were just a bit jet lagged, so they're not looking fantastic, and I'm just a bit worried that they haven't grown enough to be nice and glowy tomorrow. But... What I'm going to try and do, it might take me a year, is I'm going to ask you to give me your designs. And if we don't have anything to show you on Flickr tomorrow, over the next however many months, I will try and do your design for you and we will put it up on Flickr so you will get to see what it was that you drew. Um, so when I ask you to draw, what I'm going to do is give you a piece of paper because the best way to draw these things is to draw a picture, your whatever it is, on paper. Put your petri dish on the top and then trace over the image through the petri dish um, using the bacteria. Because then you can see where you've been. Because you are working with invisible ink, essentially, right? Um, so then what I want you to do is put your, maybe put your name or something on that piece of paper. Keep that piece of paper and I will take that. And then if it all goes horribly wrong and there's nothing going tomorrow, over the next however many months I will try and do that for you. And then you will see your design in lights. How does that sound? as far as I'm concerned. I just, I, I'm amazed by how something as small as a little microbe can get inside of our really complicated bodies and then sometimes in the space of about four days can leave you a dead little moosh on the ground. I just find that incredible. And so um, I just kind of want to know how they do that and that's kind of what I've made a career out of. The other thing that I'm really interested in are things that glow in the dark. So I 
find the creatures that glow just amazing and uh, what I've managed to do for a career, and believe me, I can't believe I get paid to do this for a living, <laughs> is I get to take the genes from things like fireflies and growing bacteria and I get to put them inside of really nasty bacteria so I don't really make really nasty bacteria glow in the dark. <laughs> so you can see them coming and run screaming. <laughs> Um, for some of the bacteria that I work with, they take a really long time to grow. So we have uh, one bacteria in particular called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis, uh, so a lung disease. Um, it takes about 24 hours to divide. So it takes about six to eight weeks for us to get colonies on a petri dish, uh, the kind of thing that we would see tomorrow with the bacteria that we're going to use today. Um, and now TB is a really, really nasty disease. About uh, one third of the world's population have it and have no idea. Um, so, and probably in this room there'll be a number of people who are harboring this bug in their lungs. And, and you're not infectious, so that's good. Otherwise we'd be kicking you out. Um, but you know, if somebody coughs on you, just, it only takes five bacteria to infect someone. So, um, four and a half thousand people die every day from TB. And we basically have run out of drugs to treat it. So we now have strains of TB that are so drug resistant that only treatment options are to incarcerate people for basically as long as they're infectious um, or to cut out the bits of infected lung and hope that they have enough left to survive with. So um, it's a really nasty disease. So my lab in Auckland, we are interested in trying to find new drugs and we use bioluminescence to kind of speed up this process. So normally what would happen is you would take your bacteria and you'd grow it and you'd take some drugs and you kind of fling the two of them together and then you plate out the bacteria onto petri dishes and then you see did the bacteria survive or did they die. And so with TB that can take kind of two months. But if we have glowing bacteria, the really important thing about bioluminescence is it requires living organisms. So if the drugs have worked and the, and the bacteria have died, we can see straight away because we just measure light rather than waiting for them to grow. So we can do those kinds of tests in about two days rather than two months. So that's kind of one of the things we're doing with it. The other really amazing thing about light is that it can travel through flesh. So who has done that experiment where you put a, uh, your hand over a torch? Right, what happens? are working using much fewer animals than if we didn't have glowing bacteria. And so the bacteria are inside of that animal, they are glowing if they're alive, we add our drugs, they stop glowing, and we just have really sensitive cameras that can pick up the light coming out of the out of the animal if those bacteria are alive. So that's kind of why it's really useful. Um, a little bit about the creatures that glow. So um, so bioluminescence, here, so here's your first lesson about bioluminescence. You're right. <laughs> Okay, so lots of people ask me about the glowing cats. Right? Do I make glowing cats for a living and stuff like that? Um, I don't, and what's really different about what I do and the cats thing is that those glowing cats are not bioluminescent. So they are fluorescent, which is a very, very different thing. So fluorescence is that you take um, a, a protein and when you hit it with a wavelength of light, the electrons get all excited and they jump out of their um, orbits and when they fall back in again, they emit another wavelength of light and that's the wavelength of light that you can see. So those glowing cats, you put, you put them under UV and the protein that they have called green fluorescent protein will then fluoresce this beautiful green color and that's what we see. With bioluminescence, it's a chemical reaction. So we take a couple of chemicals, we mix them together and we get light as a result of that chemical reaction. So it's very, very different. And this is one of the reasons why it requires live cells, because they require energy as part of this chemical reaction. So I have some of the chemicals that I'm going to put together and hopefully they will flash and we'll see it. Um, but they don't require this excitation. They don't require us to shine a light at them to get them to glow. You just put the chemicals together and then they glow. So this reaction has evolved many, many times in lots of different creatures 
for lots of different purposes. So, um, in, you, in the US, you guys have got an amazing example of bioluminescence. What is it? Fireflies. They are incredible. So, who knows what fireflies use their light for? Yes, Evie. Bioluminescence. Yeah, so what do they use their light for? Why do fireflies go? To get Remember? girls. To get girls. <laughs> <laughs> they do. So they use it to find the opposite sex, to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And what happens is the females are kind of hanging around in the bush and the males fly around and they flash. And what's incredible about fireflies is that every species has their own language, has their own particular kind of flash. So the males flash and if a female sees a flash that she likes, then she responds. And so they start this little dialogue. She, uh, the male can then find out where the female is, and then he comes down and he does the business. <laughs> but there are some very, very clever females who've exploited this to find some food. So they pretend to be the female of the male species, but they're not. And so they do this flash, and the male comes down and thinks he's going to get lucky, and instead, he gets eaten. <laughs> How amazing is that? Yeah, cool. then, so another one of my, so in New Zealand, another one of my favourite um, uh, organisms. Another one of my favourite organisms is called the glowworm. So this is a little, um, a little caterpillar of a, a fly, actually, um, and they glow and they use their light to attract food as well. So they make these amazing silk hammocks, and they live in caves. Um, and then they drop down these what we call fishing lines of silk. Um, and then the flying insects are attracted to the light, probably because they think it's a cave exit. Um, and they get stuck in these fishing lines, and then they get devoured. What's really cool about the glowworm is the adults, so they spend about 11 months of the year as this little larvae, um, and then they form a, a cocoon, and then they hatch out as a fly, a bit like a mosquito, but with one really important difference. They don't have a mouth. So their only job is to find a mate, lay some eggs, and then die, usually exhausted and rather hungry. Um, and then those eggs hatch out and become the, the glowworms again. So they're pretty cool. Um, another one of my favorites is uh, the glowing fish from um, Finding Nemo. Anglerfish. Anglerfish. So they are amazing, and they really are as ugly as they look. <laughs> they're incredible. And they use their light to, again, to attract, um, to attract food. So they kind of wave it around. What, what they use to glow is actually a, a bioluminescent bacteria that they provide a house for, um, and then this bacteria kind of glows, uh, and the anglerfish um, attract their food. Another really cool thing about the anglerfish, so they live in the very, very deep sea. They find it difficult to find a mate. And so what the males do when they find a female is they bite her, and then they release an enzyme that fuses his lips to her body. And then over time, they basically atrophy so that all that's left are the gonads. <laughs> and so, the, so the female now has sperm on tap. And not only that, she can have more than one male bite her. So she has more than one pair of gonads. Basically. So now she doesn't have to find a male in the deep sea. She's found one or several. And they're there with her for life. How awesome is that? Wow. Right, so we, I could do this all day. So what we'll do, <laughs> give me another. Okay. So what we'll do is let, let's do some drawing. So I want everybody to grab a petri dish or two, and then I want you to take a piece of paper. Um, you might have. You're going to have to share the sharpies unless you have a pen or something. Um, I want you to trace around your petri dish, and then that's the. Yeah, yeah, so everybody has a stack, take your Petri dish, and then I want you to trace the Petri dish on your piece of paper. And then inside the piece of paper, I want you to draw your design. Everybody, just pay attention to me for a minute. Okay, so there's a piece of paper, and there's a Petri dish. It has an up and a down, okay? Whatever you do, don't stick your fingers on the Petri dish, because whatever's on your fingers will grow in that, on that Petri dish, and then it will get in the way of our glowing bacteria, right? Don't breathe on it, because whatever's in your breath will also grow on this Petri dish. Okay, so we have a lid, and then we have the dish that has the jelly in it, right? What I want you to do is place the, the dish with the jelly on the paper side, and preferably at the top, and trace around that so that you've got your circle. And then within that circle, draw your design. Bear in mind, this is your pen. Right? This is your pen. You can 
fun, but when you start, you will realize how difficult this is. Okay? So, bear in mind this is your pen. I would try something simple to start with. Hopefully there's enough for a couple of petri dishes for everyone, so you have one that you can muck up, and then one that won't be. Okay? Now, so draw, everybody draw your picture. Creatures that glow. Uh, I've teamed up with a graphic artist, and we've made some animations about bioluminescence. So cool. we made some, uh, and they're about three, two to three minutes long. Each of them talks about one of the creatures that glows, and then why as a use for bioluminescence in science. So one of them's about mine. One of them's about NASA, who use bioluminescence to search for extraterrestrial life. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Uh, we've done one about um, a little squid that uses bacteria to, uh, like an invisibility cloak. Um, and then we're about to do one on glowworms. And uh, actually, I will take suggestions if there are other ones that you want us to, uh, to do. So, so, did you do this like an animation about the glow things, or did you actually do an animation using the glow bacteria? No, no, no. It's, it's an animation about it. Yes. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put some cards on the table.
No, it's always oh, actually. So the deep sea ones are always the kind of bluey colour. Um, fireflies can be uh, they're greeny coloured. Um, there are beetles that have got green light and red light, and that's all it is. Is the um, it's the enzyme, the luciferase, that changes slightly that changes the colour of the light.